Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Heidi from My Reading Life and I'm here today to film my book haul for the month of December. So yeah, December is uh, usually a book haul heavy month for me just because of the holidays. Uh, and this December was no different. So I have 12 books to talk about today. Um, and I'm going to do my TBR check in in a separate video once December is actually over because today is only December 30th. So there is a chance um, that I will complete a few more books before the end of the year. So we'll do the TBR check in along with uh, a goals recap to see where I ended up for the year 2020, 2022. Um, and we'll see how that goes. But today we're just going to do the book haul because like I said, there are 12 books. So that's quite a few and I want to, um, you know, have time to talk about them without making the video too long. So the very first book is one that I've already talked about on the channel. I purchased it and read it in the same day, and that's Legends and Lattes by Travis Baldry. I don't have the copy any longer of the book that I purchased, um, but I did talk about it in my uh, last Recent Reads video. Really enjoyed this cozy fantasy novel and would recommend it if you're looking for a warm hug of a book. So then um, the rest of these, that was the only book that I bought myself in the month of December. The rest of these are gifts that I received um, for Christmas. So the first two are books that my daughter gifted me and one of which I've already read. And that one is Comfort Me With Apples by Catherine M. Valente. Now, I don't believe I've ever read any Catherine M. Valente before, um, but I had heard about this book uh, from Scott over at Gunpowder Fiction and Plot, I believe is where I read it, or maybe it was Nell um, at Book Hunt. Uh, her on her channel one of the two of them talked about this book anyway um it's just a little shorty it's about 100 pages long and i really i've already read this but i don't want to talk about it here in the book haul um really enjoyed this speculative fiction book so good and then i she my daughter also gifted me this romance novel this is honey and spice by bolu babalola this is about a young woman who has a radio show she's in college in England and um, she makes a comment evidently on her radio show that has her reputation in jeopardy and so she has to enter into this fake dating relationship with a, a guy who's known as a player about campus um, and it's about their their relationship um, and about how each of them learn to understand the other and all that sort of thing. And I, I, you know me, I do like a romance. Um, really love the cover of this one and looking forward to trying this author who is new to me. So those are two fiction from my daughter for Christmas. The next two uh, novels were gifts to me from my husband. And the first one is one that's been talked about a ton on booktube and it's Demon Copperhead by Barbara Kingsolver. I have read quite a few Barbara Kingsolver books at this point. Um, and this one, uh, I've heard, you know, mixed reviews about actually, but I think that the topic, which is um, sort of a retelling of the David Copperfield story from the perspective of a person in um, America and Appalachia and who's dealing with drug abuse and that sort of thing in his community. Uh, I think it's a him. Yeah, Demon is the is the character's name uh, that is the main character. So yeah, I've heard a lot of things about this. I have I did not like so much uh, King Solver's last book that I read, which was Unsheltered. Um, but I think this one has a premise that I'm really interested in. Um, I love this cover. I love all the different symbols on the cover that I assume have something to do with the story. Uh, it is a chunker, but her books tend to be a uh, bigger book. So yeah, I, I typically do like Barbara Kingsolver's writing style. And then the second novel from my husband was this one, True Biz by Sarah Novick, which is the story of uh, some kids in a deaf school. This is about a group of students at a school for the deaf who just want to live a life without having to uh, deal with the adults and other politicians and other people. And it's what they get up to. Um, it is sort of just a story of kids, but from the perspective of those kids being deaf. So I've heard really good things about this story and I've, I've taken a flip through and I think that it's going to be quite an interesting narrative because there's a lot of different things in the text that aren't like typical um, just prose paragraphs. So I'm really looking forward to this one. 
and I think it's going to be something different and something interesting. So looking forward to that. And then the next bunch are um, nonfiction. And this first one is one that uh, was gifted to me by Britta Bowler. This is Why the Dutch Are Different, A Journey into the Hidden Heart of the Netherlands by Ben Coates. And this is just what it says on the tin, a book all about the Netherlands. And Britta gifted this to me because uh, my husband and I are planning a trip to Europe this year in 2023. And we are planning to visit Amsterdam um, as well as some other places in Europe. And uh, she, Britta knows that I am interested in reading about a place before I go there. So I was really tickled to receive this in the mail from her. Um, looking forward to getting myself prepared for a new adventure. I've never been to Europe, never been to the Netherlands, obviously. Um, so yeah, this one's gonna be great for teaching me some things before I take that trip. And then the next two books were gifts from my parents. Um, and this one is Invisible Women, Data Bias in a World Designed for Men by Carolyn Criado Perez. This is a book that uh, came out a few years ago and was talked about quite a bit on BookTube and I didn't get a chance to read a copy at that time, um, but I have really heard that it's an excellent book and I think it's about a topic that I'm particularly interested in um, and uh, Britta particularly praised this one really highly, so I am really, uh, intrigued to find out what this one's all about and to see how um, studies and policies and procedures have all been designed for men without taking into consideration specific things about women that may make results different um, for those things. So, and I like pretty, pretty much like anything that's about data and how data is analyzed and used to create um, the structures around us in our world and in our culture. And then um, this chunker I also received from my parents. This is Colonel Roosevelt by Edmund Morris. This is book three in his three book trilogy about a biography about Theodore Roosevelt. I've already read the first two in that trilogy. This was the last one that I needed. Um, sorry for the shiny cover. This one is maybe the thickest one of the three. Uh, so I think in book two, we ended with um, Theodore Roosevelt's last term as president. And so this will be his post-presidency part of his life, which will coincide with the book that I read by Candace Millard, which was about Teddy Roosevelt and his exploration of um, a river uh, in the Amazon basin after he became president. So that should be in here and his trip to Africa after he was president and things like that, basically the last part of his life when he was not president. So very much, uh, will be, I will be starting this in the 1st of January because I really want to get through Teddy Roosevelt and so I can continue on in my presidential reading challenge. Uh, this next nonfiction was the rest of these actually were all gifts from my husband. Um, and this is one again, that's been on my wish list for a really long time. This is Prairie Fires, The American Dreams of Laura Ingalls Wilder by Carolyn Frazier. I've heard lots of good things about this book. It was, um, you know, winner of, I don't know if it's the author of this particular book, winner of the Pulitzer Prize. And I've heard lots of good things about this book. I am, you know, I grew up with the Little House in the Prairie books being a very central part of my reading life. They were the first chapter books that I read on my own. Um, I am a fan of them, although I know that they are problematic uh, today because I know a lot more about life than I did back when I was a kid. But, and so I think this book, Prairie Fires, does delve into um, a more realistic picture of Laura Ingalls Wilder and her family. And so I am really interested in sort of getting uh, a different look at uh, some beloved childhood classics that I read and have read many times actually. And then these last three, as I said, were gifts from my husband, but they are all books that are for the Book Naturalist Book Club. The first one is the book that we will read in February. This is A Bigger Picture by Vanessa Nakate, My Fight to Bring a New African Voice to the Climate Crisis. And this is about a young woman who um, is speaking out about the fact that uh, the, the, the fight against, uh, the fight to bring awareness about the issues surrounding climate change have mostly been from white people and that there, a lot of the impacts of climate change are happening to uh, people of color and that their voices should be a loud part of what we hear about um, 
about the fight to make adjustments to the way we live in order to combat climate change. And so very much looking forward to reading this in February with Book Naturals Book Club. And then I also received Call of the Reed Warbler, A New Agriculture, A New Earth by Charles Massey. This one is about um, agriculture and its impacts on the earth. And I believe this author is Australian, although it doesn't say so on the back here. Not that um, I might not be able to read it. <laughs> Uh, yeah, because I don't have my reading glasses on. So anyway, I believe this is all about agriculture and the impacts of agriculture on our environment and how our industrial agricultural practices are um, really harming the earth. And uh, this one is also a chunker, but I think this topic is super important and I'm interested to know more about it. And then this one is to speak for the trees, my life's journey from ancient Celtic wisdom to a healing vision of the forest by Diana Brerisford Kroger. And this one we'll be reading in March and um, talks about uh, a lot of things that have to do with Ireland and forests with this woman uh, grew up and how she first uh, sort of built her thinking about forests and the importance of forests came from her her history and her ancestry in Ireland. So yeah, this is a book that I always really enjoy reading books that have to do with forest and forest ecology. So I think this one will be right up my alley for that topic. So those are the 12 books that I brought into my house in the month of December. Um, you'll just have to wait and see uh, how that's going to impact my TBR um, and my overall TBR numbers for, uh, you know, the, the tracking that I've been doing over the last year or so. So stay tuned for that. I hope you're all doing well and finding some great books to read and I will talk to you later.